folks, uh, I just wanted to bring you this two-part lesson uh, to go over some of what I would call box theory on the mandolin. Uh, and this is an approach to playing in every key, um, but it's a very left-hand focused technique. Uh, something that I think everyone can benefit from learning, even if they already know it. Just focusing on it uh, is an important step in getting better and expanding your knowledge and comfortability on the fretboard and being able to move around in various keys. So there's really two positions for this. In this video, I'll be going over the octave position. In the second video, we'll be going over some of what I would call more chord position uh, based out of this kind of chord. Uh, but for this video, we'll be playing out of the octave. And the octave on the mandolin is pretty simple. And I like this shape and this kind of theory because every note that you could need is between these two fingers when you're playing an octave. Uh, so with this exercise and with this technique, our index finger is always going to be the leading finger. We're kind of looking at the mandolin like this, you know, more like that rather than like this. So it's going this way, not this way. Uh, and in the chord, in the more chord shaped practice, we are going to be looking at it this way because it's important to connect the two. For this octave practice, I like to use a tune that can be played uh, in, in one octave. And I've always used um, East Virginia Blues, Rosalie McFall, it's the same melody, I Don't Want Your Greenback Dollar. All that same melody. Uh, that melody can very nicely be played out of an octave. I'm not tabbing that out uh, solely for the sake of you don't need to play it like I do. Um, just kind of come up with your own thing that can be played there and work on moving your own thing around. That's much more important than learning to play exactly what I'm playing. So we'll start here in E, um, playing out of this E octave shape. My index finger is on the second fret of the, of the D string and my pinky is on the seventh fret of the A string. So we've got an octave there. And between those two, without having to move your thumb or your position of your left hand, you have an arpeggio. You, you can make it a minor arpeggio. You can play a major seven, dominant seven, six, uh, flat six. So you can really do anything you need, um, you know, with, with lots of exceptions, of course, but the large majority of basic ideas can just be found from having this hand in the right place. And, you know, the whole point of these left hand techniques and right hand techniques are to not have to work any harder than you have to, to achieve your sound. You know, you don't want strain on, on either hand or wasted energy uh, unless it's going directly to your sound. So I like to take this tune and start in a key like E, and we're starting with our index finger here because that's our lead finger. And I'm not worrying about what the other notes are. I'm not worrying about anything other than this finger is in the right place and everything else is a shape. You know, I'm thinking in terms of the shape, I'm thinking, oh, I can grab the flat seven there because I know where it is in terms of the shape. But I'm not thinking this flat seven is a D. You know, I can think that if I need to, and that's another element of music theory. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're kind of trying to advance our knowledge of the fingerboard and be able to grab what we need as soon as possible with minimal effort. So I like to start with my index on the root uh, on the E here and just play that melody. You can choose any melody you want. Uh, you could even just make up a lick. You could play an arpeggio. And just move that around. Um, so I'm going to play a little bit of the greenback dollar here and then I'll pick another key so let's say I want to move to C sharp uh, I could play this C sharp as the root but I'm gonna to go to this one instead because the further up the neck you go um, the more it makes sense to play out of our other chord shape so for this uh, purpose I'm gonna keep it down here So there I'm playing out of C sharp, and I'm not I'm not thinking about you know what 
what the five is in C sharp or the third or anything like that. Those are things that you should be able to do, um, but they're not as important when you're playing as thinking about the values and connecting that with your head and your hands. Um, that's the most important thing. And the benefit of an exercise like this is that you kind of get to do this without overthinking. Uh, you make it a lot simpler than it uh, seems to be, at least initially. So let's take a different key now. Let's say we want to play it in A flat. My lead finger is just going to find the root note, so I'm going to find this A flat here, and just take off from there. Everything else should fit right in place. Uh, just like you pick it up here, and you, you move it, and it's all the same. So now we can move to another key. Uh, we could go up the octave in A flat. But let's go to B flat. You know. So everything should be accessible once you have this finger in the right place. Now getting back to the idea of the octave with our pinky in the right place too, it's important to use this as a guide together. Uh, you can use just your index finger, but then you know, then you have to run the risk of actually finding where you need to be with your pinky. But when we when we guide our hand like this on the fingerboard when we're playing, everything is already in place or ready and can kind of just snap in place on the fingerboard when it needs to. So like I said previously, the whole point of this is to not have to make our left hand work any harder than it needs to to find the notes we need. Uh, we want to eliminate all that extra energy and wasted tension and everything like that if we can. So it can really help to just have these fingers in an octave shape and move them around the fingerboard. And just get comfortable to having your hand in this general resting position on the fingerboard. Uh, it's going to condense a little the farther you get up the neck, and that's something your hand should kind of naturally train itself to do. So for the purpose of this exercise, I like to stay within the octave um, and not go above this B note here or whatever your fifth note is. So thinking more in terms of note values with this shape, I do think that's important to recognize. Uh, with bluegrass music, I think it's important to look at things in terms of numbers instead of note values. Uh, that's kind of the way the Nashville number system works and just bluegrass communication in general is all based in You know the one chord the five chord or or the one tone the third tone Something like that rather than worrying about what the third is in B. You can just know it's the third um, For the sake of playing at least So let's look at our note values out of this octave shape So our index finger is always going to be on the one here at least while we're in the shape and our pinky Will be on the one as well. The fifth is accessible with our index finger, uh, just a string above the root. Um, the sixth is always accessible here with our middle finger, and the seventh with our ring finger. The fourth can be found with our pinky just below the octave, the third with our ring finger, and the second with our index finger. So if you're sitting here in this position and you think to yourself, oh, I need to grab the third, you know where it is, your finger's ready and can get there easily. Likewise, if you need to grab the sixth, um, say in a tune like uh, Ashland Breakdown, so we'll go to C here. So that tune is, is or at least that part of that tune is out of that shape. So we grab that easily with our uh, middle finger here on that sixth tone. And I'm not worrying so much about the fact that that's an A note as much as it is I'm in C and that's the sixth tone because it is such according to the shape. You can do this with a lot of tunes. I find it important to stay within your fingers, uh, within the octave shape here. Um, I first kind of learned this technique on Don't Give Your Heart to a Rambler. 
uh, out of A, which sounds like this. But we're kind of going out of that shape, so I think uh, if, unless you feel extremely comfortable, it's important to stay within that shape just for the sake of understanding this technique. So a way to practice this is just take any tune, any lick, any, any idea, any musical idea, and just move it around and think about the tones you're playing and kind of match in your head the position of each finger to the tone. And just, you know, it's not like you don't have to worry about what these notes are here and then think about what these notes are here for the sake of playing. You can just know one, three, five, one, one, three, five, one, one, three, five, one. So I'm gonna play East Virginia Blues uh, once more and just hop around a few keys and feel free to mess with any tune that makes sense to you within that shape, any idea, and just take it around to a few keys. So I'll just, I'll play it once and then I'll come out a couple more keys. We'll start in the key of F. One, two, down the octave. 